Hello, I'm Adam Taylor, and I'm here with Jordan Powers today. And today, we're going to edit each other's photos. How did this idea come about? Well, I was watching one of Jordan's editing tutorials, and while I was watching it, uh, I had this feeling of like I wanted to take the mouse and start doing things myself, and I was wondering why he was doing this and not that. Uh, and I got this idea that it would be interesting to see how two photographers tackle the same images. So I gave Jordan one of my photos, and he gave me one of his photos. We both edited them, and now we're going to compare them, see what's similar, what's different. Uh, it's not a competition. We're not trying to figure out who's the best, uh, and we don't have a full-on game plan for how this is going to go. But just as friends, we wanted to see what we could learn from each other. Uh, and we thought it would be cool to share it because we figured other people could probably learn from this as well. Anything you want to add, Jordan? No, I think you, you pretty much summed it up. I think it's a good practice. I, I did this a few times uh, with back in like my landscape photography days, but I never actually talked through the editing process with another person. So this is going to be this is going to be interesting. And we cool. and by the way, we have not yet seen each other's like I have not seen the final edit that you've done of mine and vice versa. Yep. So this will we'll, you'll be getting our, our real reactions here. Yeah. Yeah. So that was part of the plan, too, is to kind of have everything candid and have it unfold naturally. Um, Jordan and I are good friends. We talk pretty often. Uh, we talk about business and each other's work really often. So I'm excited to dive into this. Uh, so we're going to start out with my photo first. Uh, again, I edited it. I sent him all the raw files with really zero context around the photo, except this was an architectural shoot. Uh, have at it. And so let's pull them up. I'm going to share the screen here. So I'm going to turn. I've got a, a monitor over here. Uh, the camera's over here. So let's take a look at these. My photo is on the left. Jordan's is on the right. Um, I'll start off and say that right off the bat, uh, Jordan's looks a little bit brighter and more inviting than mine. Again, it's not a competition. Um, you know, I'm not trying to say whose is better because I think there's good things from every edit that you do. Um, so mine looks like it has what I would call more natural shadows coming from the left from that window, which makes the foreground a little bit darker. Jordan's, um, used a bit more of the flash frames that I provided. Um, what's your initial thoughts, Jordan? You know, I am really surprised at how yours looks like how I would normally edit. And I was trying to edit how I thought you would normally edit. Really? That's interesting. Yeah. So, so. I mean, you know, my look is a lot more natural with like very, like, I don't really try to show my flash at all, but uh -huh. I know that you're, well, I know you've been, yours have been looking a little less flashy mm -hmm. in the, in the recent year, but I was, for some reason I was defaulting to that. Well, he's got all these flash frames. I think he wanted to use them. Uh -huh. So I was trying to use those to replicate what i thought you were you would want to accomplish with it okay interesting um so so i i did a few of my own little things that i normally do but i was really leveraging your mm -hmm. your flash frame so that that is very interesting and when i saw yours pop up i thought for sure the one on the left was mine uh-huh <laughs> um that's yeah, so funny yeah so. so so what's really interesting here too is uh you know i don't want to jump too far ahead but yeah. When I edited yours, there was a bunch of frames that I was like, uh, I think he's got these in here for a reason. And I ended up not using them because I was like, you know what? Yeah. Screw it. I just think it looks better without them. So I threw away a bunch of the frames that you provided. And yeah. mine is cropped in a little bit and yours isn't. Whereas in your photo, uh, I saw just because you just now sent me the image and like right away, I noticed that it was it cropped a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of interesting too, that like I cropped mine and you cropped yours, but we didn't crop each other's. Yeah. I, uh, I left yours uncropped mainly because, so I, I worked on yours for about an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. And, uh, the, the main thing I was trying to accomplish with yours is to try to get rid of the haze and we'll yeah. probably show some of the original files in a minute here. Yeah. But there's a lot of haziness happening. And, um, like that was kind of my main objective. So I spent the majority of the time, the editing time, trying to like maneuver that haze that was happening. Yeah, totally. And also, I, I think that by the time I got like about an hour and 15 minutes in, into it, I was like, man, we're just doing this for fun. I know. <laughs> I kind of, I kind of just, I kind of just gave up after it, a little while. Um, it was very easy to feel a little bit more lazy on your photo than it was on mine. That's for sure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so 
Um, yeah, all that said, there was also some things I took note of that, like, I probably would have shot different on location. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. I'd, would, li I'd like to hear about that for sure. Yeah. That, that probably would have made my editing decisions a little different. Okay. So what would um, you have done different on location or do I need to well, show the raw files first? Yeah. Maybe, maybe let's look at your raw files just okay. to see what we were working with. So I'm going to, uh, kind of pull those up on the other screen over here while I'm preparing. While you're doing that, I'll, I'll also just include that we didn't even really exactly plan how we were going to present this. So this is all kind of on the fly. Yeah, off the cuff um, stuff for sure. Here. Yeah, but hopefully hopefully everybody finds this interesting. So I've got to tell you, Jordan, for me, this was an absolute nightmare of a photo to shoot and edit. Yeah. And uh, when we started talking about, let's do this, I wasn't going to give you this one because I felt like it was just... It felt bad. <laughs> too, too difficult. Yes, it felt bad. Like, I was like, oh, my God, I don't want to give you this pile of garbage to deal with. Um, but you were like, no, nah, like, you know, if, if the intention is to learn from each other, like, let's let's go for it. So these are all the raw files that I gave Jordan. Uh, I'll just kind of quickly click through them. Uh, and you can see the haze he's talking about start to show up right there. And so this was a couple weeks ago. Uh, I'm going to try to remember the best I can, like, why I did certain things. I think what I did was shot a bracket. Uh, with a circular polarizer filter turned one way and then the other. So that's why you would see like it starts you, you dark. Can, yeah, you can see the patterns on the, the window film. Right. So, you know, that was dark to light and then switch the polarizing filter and shoot dark to light again. And then they've got this big like halo thing right in the middle of the screen there along with all that haze. And then I might have taken the polarizing filter off at some point so that I didn't lose a stop of light because this place was so dark. Like there was this window over here to the left, but there was no windows behind me, no light coming from the right side, and just this big middle of the day light coming straight towards the camera out of that window. Yeah. So then I started popping flashes and, you know, there wasn't a lot of places to put the flashes. It was either, oh, and, and mind you, where the camera is, is butted up against the cabinets as far back as it can go, like without sitting the camera on top of the countertop. I figured because I think you would have made different decisions had you had more space behind yeah, you. Yeah, totally. Um, and so, you know, there's some flashes to the right and I'm trying to pop flashes kind of behind the camera to the right a little bit. And I, I'll be honest with you, I was struggling, you know. And so I, I think at this point, like I, yeah, up the ISO a little bit to, um, you know, this is 400 ISO. Most of them, the other ones are probably yeah, 200. So I was up in the ISO to try to brighten up everything with the flash pop because I wasn't getting a lot of power even out of my 280 600s. Um, and then I had this big bright spot on the on the front cabinet and these shadows on the the little handles on the drawer pulls coming to the far right. Yeah. Um, and then of course like the weird shadows up here on the little pendants and the uh, ceiling cutout. And then of course the reflections in the window. I mean it was just like everything I did, it was like causing a different problem. So this is like a, a pretty even cabinet that you probably used some of. Maybe I might have used some, I should have maybe used a little more of it myself. But yeah, I was just trying everything. And then I realized that um, the countertop over here was like super blown out. And I was trying to figure out a way to get some of the countertop and using the polarizer, not using the polarizer. Uh, trying to you're get throwing, some... you're throwing everything you could at it. <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah. I was trying to do everything I could to make sure that once I got into Photoshop, I had a little bit of everything to try to piece together. Uh, yeah. Oh, and then put myself outside trying to light up the, um, the outdoor furniture a little bit. And you can see it went from all three doors open, uh, which, you know, made the outside like very tinted, uh, made very dark. Um, mm -hmm. and, and this one, you can even see I popped a flash outside here. So notice the outdoor. And then this yeah. one, I popped a little flash to brighten up the table and chairs a tiny bit. Right. But then I closed the door so that I only had to shoot through one uh, window back here and kind of did everything again. So a flash pop on the right and then a flash pop uh, yeah, on the left over here. So again, I, I was just like, you know what, let me give myself a million options because I don't know how I'm going to put this thing together in post. <clears throat> um, right. So I, I guess now I'll open up my Photoshop file and show you what I did do in post. And then I'd love to see your Photoshop file and uh, see what you did as well. Yeah. So before you, before you actually go back to that. So, oh yeah, sorry. <clears throat> excuse me, just to talk through a couple of things that I would have done different on the shoot. Yeah. Or maybe we can talk about that after we look at your Photoshop files. Let's do that. I'll talk about it after. Okay. Uh, okay. So 
Uh, and this wasn't, I didn't clean up this file for this uh, thing. Like, you know, when I do my workshops, I typically clean up my files so they're a little prettier. Mm -hmm. um, and it looks like this one wasn't used. So I'm just going to delete that for the time being so we don't get confused. Um, mm -hmm. So this is the ambient base that I started with. But <laughs> that was a combination of all this stuff to begin with. So yeah. if we turn off a lot of these and build it up, what do we start with? I mean, dude, this was a nightmare. So I started with this super bright base <laughs> yeah. and then I added in a medium one and I probably used um, Hunter Loma Yesva. I don't know how to say his last name. Yeah. His action of, um, it's just a, an exposure blend that I use quite often when I don't want to use Riot Pro. Mm -hmm. So built it up a little bit, added in a little bit more of this shadow to get rid of that haze that you were talking about with this even darker one. Uh, let's see, yeah, mid cabinets dark. Then I probably used another one of Hunter's things and then added in uh, like a, a harder blend here on the left window. So before and after. And then I painted in a little bit more using this much darker frame of the outside view. And then let's see. So yeah, we're still working on ambient. Um, so this was recovering some of the highlights over on the left and on the counter here in the foreground. And then the island top, I guess. So this would have been a, um, a polarizing filter kind of turn. So you can see the countertop. I get some of those details back in the countertop. And then what is this one? Uh, I, I, th I guess I just ended up not using any part of this one. So there's my ambient where I started. Then I started on the flash stuff. So if we look at the first flash frame that I used, uh, it is this one that is pretty flat. I probably like dropped down the uh, um, contrast on this file or something. Sure. Um, and you can see a little bit of that natural shadow still in here, um, but that they, I didn't have the, uh, the bright uh, hotspot on the cabinet here. And you can see that I used um, these as smart objects because I knew that I was gonna have to go back and forth to like, you know, drop down the, uh, the contrast or whatever. Yeah. But even uh, oh. even right here, as a, it, it's looking good, like you can even just add some contrast to maybe mess with some right <clears throat> some shadows, and it look it look pretty oh. good. Okay, I know why this is looking like it is because this is only thirty percent. I yeah. Okay, so bump that up. So this is mm. the flash frame that I started with. Yeah, and then I did have yeah. the hot spot here, so I added in uh, this frame that was flash, <clears throat> and just added that. So that's kind of where I started. But then I did um, Nathan Cool's like fast flambient blend and then blended out a little bit of it. So you can see like the dark spots over here on the, uh, on the layer panel. Some of those dark spots I'd probably manually blended out. And then I decided to drop that down to what you saw earlier, which was 30%. Right. So after I had my flash, then it was this, which is still a hazy mess. Uh, so at this point, I'm like, oh crap, what am I going to do? <laughs> um, so I went into the counters and started just kind of piecing things in. So this one, I used a flash frame. This is only at 50% now, so I'll remember that. So it started with this flash frame, which is, I think, the first one that I used again, uh, or to begin my flash blending. So I blended in just the countertop and then dropped that down to 50%. And then added some curves on that because it felt like it was a little too bright. Yeah. And then on the little peninsula island here, uh, which was totally blown out. Uh, this one, let's see. That's at 80%. And that would have been what? This flash frame. So I just blended in that 80%. And then uh, what's next? Sorry, Photoshop's a little slow when we're on Zoom. No problem. So <clears throat> what's interesting is uh, how you've layered, like your, 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 your first fo area focus is the counters. Mm. It was kind of, I'm kind of like following your thought process as yeah. well and like how you're, how you're deciding to like solve yeah. the puzzle for this thing. Yeah, I think maybe I was like kind of working into the scene, um, yeah. like foreground to background. Um, so counter left. Okay, so I ended up blending in some, over here on this left counter. And then uh, if we zoom out a little bit over here on this like kind of bench partitioner thing, 
And that was only at 40% opacity of what another flash frame. It looks like the same flash frame that was like my, my first flash base. So I'm just like picking little bits and pieces of those, get that back to 40%. So now I've got the counters uh, somewhat taken care of. Then I put a curves adjustment layer on this counter again, because I felt like it didn't look appropriate. So I just blended that, uh, whoops. So just this part of the counter. Uh, and then I went to the outside view. So let's talk about the outside view. Started with, uh, and is this at 100%? No, this is only at 40%. So I started once again with this same uh, flash frame, blended in just the, um, the part that was out the open windows. And then I took this flash frame that I had flashed the outside table and opened the doors and blended that in and this is at 90 percent oh and i also pulled in a little bit of detail over here on the far left uh, on that little wood panel so that it wasn't such a hot spot so that's the outside view uh again this was at what what percent did i say that was at Ooh. 30 30 something like that is where it was I, yeah i think so yeah it looks about right <clears throat> um and at this point, I started doing fixes. Um, now, having seen years and having talked about this haze, I'm curious what would have happened if I would have flattened this and went into Adobe Camera Raw and slid the dehaze filter. So I'm going to test that hopefully quickly. I think, I think you're going to find that it, it's not magic. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I, I, I tried doing that as well. I mean, it helps, okay. but. It does help. If I bump that up and then brighten everything a little bit, it's still got some weird color cast, but yeah, those you can do. It looks pretty. I mean, it does get rid of a lot of that haze. I, I wish I would have mm -hmm. thought about that while I was editing this. Honestly, I might have left that in there. Anyways, so at this point, I started doing fixes. So I like to remove distractions. So boom, uh, pretty straightforward. Like usually, do all this kind of stuff. Removed the can lights and the light switches and the outlets over here. Uh, so I did, did that. Then I went to the desaturation stuff, uh, which is typically how I build my images, right? So I build ambient, build flash, uh, do any like local things like those countertops, fixes, then desaturate and uh, kind of layer it in this non-destructive manner. So I did a, a adjustment layer for which area? This area, basically all the white stuff, the ceiling and the walls, um, and then desaturated that. So off and on. And then I did another wall desaturation just over here. Your desaturation, are you are those layers uh, from Raya Pro or are you doing those? No, I, I tend to How select those just by hand, honestly. Like okay. I'll use a quick selection like the, the W key and get yeah. something like this and you know try to do a quick selection and then you know add in a little bit of marquee selection tool to, to help refine it. Okay. Um, and then like for this one, let's see, it's probably like reds and yellows. So yeah, so reds drop down, yellows drop down quite a bit. Uh, and then a, another section over here, like on this outside wall, I think is what I was looking at. Uh, and then a little bit of the countertop. So yeah, like the counter looked really yellow to me at that point. Mm -hmm. So desaturated that. And then blue desaturation, which was what, in here in the cabinets. Mm -hmm. So Oh, and also the, the ground out here looked a little blue. So off, mm. this is very blue. On, we get rid of that, some of that blue. And then the tabletop, uh, which is what? Oh, just outside, I guess. I don't know, it's probably hard to see it on Zoom, but uh, let's see. Yeah, look, the tabletop maybe looked a little bit blue. So I decided to that. Do you know about um, when you go into the adjustment? Uh, yeah, when you go into mm -hmm. that, about grab, okay. Yeah, grabbing sure. the hand tool. Yeah, yeah that, that's what I normally do. So like if okay. I select this, the whole ceiling, I, I'll grab the hand tool and slide down that. Um, then I did a stove top fix. So what did I do here? Um, oh, oh, I see what I did. There was like, basically the stove looked crooked. Mm -hmm. So I did a selection of just the black stove top and, uh, you know, drew some grid lines or whatever, and then uh, just straightened out that stove top. And the way I did that was, again, I had to make the selection uh, and free transform, skew, distort, whatever. 
But when I did that, there was a little bit of the stove underneath it. So I made another layer underneath it where I cloned the countertop. So there's my stove fix. And at this point, I probably had a pretty big headache. And then I add a pop, uh, which is just a curves adjustment layer. Um, <clears throat> this one I did custom. A lot of times I start with uh, the linear contrast mm -hmm. and then, you know, do something. But I guess this one, it was different. Uh, so this was my pop. Uh, and then I decided that this cabinet was a little too saturated. So I did some more desaturation on that. And at this point, I looked at it and I'm like, okay, what's next? And then I actually, uh, it's funny because I do have a, uh, a dehaze up here. So I put a little dehaze, um, but you can see this gradient thing. So basically what I just showed you guys of flattening everything, uh, doing command shift A to open up that flattened layer in Adobe Camera Raw. And then I would have did the dehaze slider. Uh, and then for whatever reason, um, I guess I felt like it was too much. So this is all of it. Huh, it's weird that I, I don't even know why I did well, that. Well, I, I uh, can, gradient. like looking on my end, I can see how the, the left side did feel a little bit more hazy than the right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> I, I guess that's what I did is I just, you know, didn't de didn't dehaze the left side as much as I did the right side. So. Yeah, and, and I called it a day at that, uh, and this is what I turned in. So typically, before I turn my photos in, I will upload them to a little mastermind group that Jordan and I are in on Facebook, where we have a couple of our friends and peers critique our images. I left this one out of the series because I didn't want Jordan to see it. And had I had this one in the series, I might have gotten some feedback that would have made it better. Um, oh, and then the final thing was crop. So uh, I work in a way that allows me to keep the crop. So you can see you know, about how much I cropped out. Um, how do you do that? Um, how were you able to do all the editing with that crop? So I, I edited it uncropped and then I would have cropped it at the very end. Um, oh, I see what you're saying. I thought you meant you, you put this crop on here and then you did all your editing and then you just, no, okay. but, but you know, uh, so it's funny, like relatively recently, um, I learned that, sorry, this is going to take a second now. This little button up here with the crop in the trash can will mm -hmm. either delete everything after you crop it or it will keep it like you just saw me like when I, I can undo that crop in Photoshop. I know Lightroom has that option or whatever built into it, but Photoshop right. gives you the option to either delete the crop or keep the crop, we'll say. Okay. Uh, so again, I, I mean, embarrassingly short time ago, I, I realized that that was an option, um, which Dude, I've, been, I've been using Photoshop since 1998. Mm -hmm. and I still discover like the most simple of things yeah every single day yeah for sure well not every day but you know what I mean. <laughs> it's just it's just there's it's such a robust program and like once you get into your own workflow you just you find things that work out better for you that's what's interesting about this it's like all the things you did they made they all make sense mm -hmm. it's just different than how i do them totally but yeah. we, we it, it, and obviously our results look different but if you would have told me hey can you replicate exactly what i made here i, mm -hmm. I probably would have i just would have used a different process right right you know um but i i went into this edit with no context and not really knowing like i i didn't edit how i would normally edit like my own photos i was mm -hmm. editing as though and maybe that that would have been a good thing to consider when i was yeah. doing the edit like do you want me to edit this how i would for my own photos or for right. yours yeah so photoshop is uh crashing on me uh um, oh good so i'll, well, I'll re open it with to, yours yeah well, well we can switch to mine if you want i can show you yeah go ahead and open process. up your photoshop i'm gonna stop sharing my screen open up your photoshop um Let's and that it. way uh, you can show me your files. Perfect. All right. Can you see me now? Yep. I got it. All right. So here is, um, everything. And I, 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 th I didn't use all of the files you sent me because I just kind of looked to see which ones are more relevant. Yeah. But, but typically my process is I will, I'll, I'll go in Lightroom. In fact, I'll, I'll just pull up Lightroom really quick. Uh, yeah. So anyway, yeah, like I was saying, I, I kind of just go through and find out what you sent me that is recoverable mm -hmm. that I might be able to use. I immediately opted out of these ones because I could see the when the window film from the polarizer. So I didn't, I just passed those. Um, and then I got into these. So this is your darker, your darkest layer. And I just was like, okay, well, what can I recover from this? And I, I kind of just push it around with the 
<clears throat> Lightroom just to see what it'll give me. Mm -hmm. And then I go on to the next ones. I'm like, I'm not gonna be able to use any of these. I don't need them for anything. Mm -hmm. And these are all just your ambient files. And as you can see, I brought the dehaze up a little bit on all these. Yep. Um, and again, I kind of just am going through here just to like find, okay, what can I actually use at least just for starters? Mm -hmm. um, I can't, I can't repeat all the thoughts that were going through my head sure. on why I selected these, but you know, th for the most part, I just, I assumed that they had information that I would use as I was picturing what the end product would look like. Yeah. Um, now this haze was like kind of driving me crazy i'm like okay how can I, let me just get a, a rough idea of what this would look like if i just threw everything together mm -hmm. so i actually took all of the selections that i made and i ran it through infuse okay um just it's basically hdr just to see what it would give me yeah um and if it would take all the haze away and mm -hmm. that kind of let me know ahead of time yeah I, I will be able to get rid of all this mm. haze relatively simple and i might even be able to use this as a base layer mm. um so then anyway, with, with all these selected, I brought them into Photoshop. So I started with the ambient layer, mm -hmm. um, just as it is. And then I just started layering on top of that. Um, it looks like I brought a little bit of the shadows in from right here. You can see it's still really hazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I basically just started layering these in like one by one. Mm -hmm. And here were you your, doing that by hand or Riot Pro? Um, these would have been like based on what it looks like here this probably would have been raya pro. i i use raya pro a lot okay um i i don't usually do things manually unless it's just something i know i can grab really quick mm -hmm. but i probably did raya pro on this okay um and then i may have even went in afterwards and just did some additional masking yeah. on top of that so these are just your ambient layers mm -hmm. um and this is as far as i could push it ambient only okay so then i was like okay let me bring in that infuse layer and see mm. what that'll give me and that's where you can see it gave me some of the color and information down here in the cabinets so okay. it's still it's still kind of an ambient layer mm -hmm. um, and then i brushed out a lot of the it's like this would have been the infuse layer mm -hmm. without any masking and i'm also only at 51 percent. okay yeah um, so I just wanted to bring in a little bit of that information and then yeah. I'm going to layer, layer um, flashes on top of this. Okay. So my, I don't really have an organization, like a structure to the way I do flash. I kind of just go back and forth a lot. Mm -hmm. So these are kind of a combination of all the different flash layers. You can see I, I did use some of your exterior flash. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can kind of see I'm, I'm, I'm more or less just going back and forth, just like taking little bits and pieces from each layer. Yeah. And just filling them in. Start with that first flash layer so I can like see it kind of build up. This one here. Yeah. Yeah. So, so and that's the thing. I, I may not have started with that. I may have started like up here. So oh. this, this is not necessarily in the order of my thought process. Okay. I got you. I got you. Interesting. <clears throat> yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have come from this and then what, went right to this like there's no mm -hmm. there's no rhyme or reason for this i would have come back and just refined that gotcha so yeah it's it's kind of like i, I take all the flash layers mm -hmm. like as i'm editing i'll take all the flash layers and i'll just think through okay like what do i want to recover i know i need to mm -hmm. deal with these windows so knowing me i probably would have started I probably would have started with the windows, just trying to get that detail back in here. Mm -hmm. But I, I do know that as I was editing this, the whole time, all I'm thinking about is this haze. Mm -hmm. How do I deal with this haze? So, so most of it, most of this edit is me dealing with the haze, to be yeah. honest with you. And then once I, once I dealt with the haze, I was able to start working on like, you know, here, here's color cast layers, just getting rid of these. Mm -hmm. Like here's my blue color cast. Mm -hmm. um the magenta and blue you have up here yep some of these don't even seem like they do anything oh we got an exposure adjustment here where i just brought these down a little bit uh -huh. oh i i know i wanted to um recover yeah you can see i brought a little bit of the ambient layer back in up here mm. to try to get that natural look back in because right mm -hmm. here it's just looking way too flashy right so i brought a little bit of the ambient layer back in but I, I really wanted to 
bring these shadows that you had in. Um, so I was, I was messing around with that a lot mm -hmm. using, let's see. Yeah, I basically just was dodging and burn, burning right there. Mm -hmm. um, or no, I'm sorry, I was using a mask. Um, yeah, this was, okay, this is, this layer here is I ran all of this, what I have so far mm -hmm. through um, just a preset I have in uh, Luminar. Mm -hmm. It's just a saturation boost and a contrast boost. So mm -hmm. see, it gave me that. Um, and then I went through and I did a, this is a color adjustment layer because a lot of these cabinets lost the color. Mm -hmm. So I just brushed some of the color back in. Cool. And is that uh, adding saturation? Is that what you did? Nope, I just brushed the color back in. So I just oh, added color. a co color layer. Okay. Sampled the cabinetry color and then just brushed it in. Interesting. Okay, good. Turn off that layer and like go through that process real quick. Cause I I've, okay. don't know if I've ever <clears throat> used a color layer in my life. Oh, really? Okay. This, well, this will come in handy. So just create a new layer and mm -hmm. switch it to color blend mode. Okay. And hit B, hold on your option key and sample the cabinet color that you want. So we'll maybe select right in here. Yeah. And you start brushing. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Now it doesn't work every time. I don't know the science behind it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> maybe I'll even sample down here. See that? So see mm. how that didn't work? Yeah. So it's I, I don't know the science behind it or why why things happen sometimes. Mm -hmm. Okay. But that's cool. all. That's all it really is. And then I did the same thing on the walls. Okay. Um, so you can kind of see there's still like this weird color cast happening. You got yeah. the yellow over here. Mm -hmm. So I just I wanted to keep it warm, so I um, sampled the warmer color and I just brushed in the ceiling. Okay. To make that a little more even across. Mm -hmm. And then I did a little bit of color balance. I just added a color balance adjustment layer, layer and warmed it up a little bit. Okay. Can you can you and, click on that uh, little circle so I can see what that color balance looked like? Yeah. So all I I was only warming up the uh, the walls here. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. So I just added a little bit of got it. Minus, okay. Minus eight on the yellow. Okay. And I and I just have it sampled or just for the uh, I didn't right. do the whole photo just the. Yep, just the, the walls and stuff. Yep. Interesting. Yeah. And so, then after this, did you bring it back into Lightroom to straighten out? Because the whole time I'm looking at this, like how you said you couldn't focus on anything but the haze. I can't focus on anything except for the horizontal lines. That seem yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So I don't, I know you straighten them ahead of time. I yeah. straighten them after. Okay. Um, so once I have my final photo, I'll bring them back into Lightroom and I know I got to switch. So I'll bring it back into Lightroom and um, that is not the finished one. Yeah, this is the finished one. And then I'll just do uh, the guided. So mm -hmm. I'll turn this off and I'll just do a guided uh, mm -hmm. adjust. Or and did that uh, crop in a little bit on the right side? Yeah, it looks like it did a little yeah. bit. Okay. Cause there was like a tiny <clears> bit of the couch poking out before. Yeah. 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 So again, I think as far as the shoot, like if, if I were shooting this, um, I would have done things just a little bit different. So mm -hmm. one, I probably would, and obviously you, you may not have had this luxury, but I would have shot it at a different time of day. Mm -hmm. um, first and foremost, just because that light, um, and, and there may not have been a better time of day. Right. But I, not knowing what time you actually shot this at, um, it, there may have been a time of day where the haze wouldn't have been as intense. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> So if I didn't have any other tools with me, I would have maybe messed around with the time of day I shot. So Again, let, let, let's talk I'm about that because I, I, yeah. I want to unpack this. So uh, sure. I'm recording my screen right now, so you can't see it, but I'm just going to go back and look at uh, the time sharing. of day. I'm going to stop sharing here. Okay. Uh, so this was at 1130 in the morning. Okay. Um, and now I'm going to pull up our finished edits again to see them side by side. And where um, would the sun have been at this point? I didn't look at the shadows to see. Yeah, good, good call. So uh, I'm going to share my screen again so I can kind of point out things, although the viewers at home are already seeing it. Okay. Can you see bridge again? Yep. Okay, cool. Um, so 
the sun was can you zoom in on your, on your photo mm -hmm. okay yep so the sun kind of rose uh i'm gonna say like back left okay and okay. it was kind of tracking like this away so by the time we shot this it was not quite like coming through the window here mm -hmm. uh because that just wouldn't happen it's like you know pretty high up but Early morning, we had some really great light coming through the front of the house that we wanted to take advantage of. Yep. Late afternoon, the sun would have been like over here to kind of far right. Um, and yeah, and uh, we didn't do a scouting or anything on this. So we were kind of just like right. shooting, you know, as we went along. So yeah, I, I don't necessarily remember my train of thought as we were shooting this in terms of like time of day. It was kind of just like, I, I think I felt like regardless if we shot it at 11 30 which we did or 3 30 or 4 30 in the afternoon uh i felt like it would have been pretty similar and i didn't want to run into yeah. the light coming in even harsher than it currently was through the front uh windows so i, I again i don't really know the science behind it but mm -hmm. you, you may have gotten better light had you shot it later in the day mm -hmm. even if the sun was kind of coming more directly in yeah um Again, don't ask me to explain the why, like sure. somebody who's a lot smarter than me probably <laughs> could. But there, there has to be some kind of thing that happens in the atmosphere when you're at like high noon mm -hmm. that creates just like a, a, a flatter type of look. And I, and I feel like when you, I, 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 and again, I don't know if this is actually what's happening, but I just, I almost feel like light is a little more scattered when it's at high noon versus when it's direct mm -hmm. so i i feel like that haze probably would have been reduced had it been mm. and, and when we look at my photo maybe I, i'm not because mine was really low in the sky when i mm. for my photo and we'll, we'll look at it in a few minutes here but you, your your sun is your sun is up here mm -hmm. and it's like it just it's it, again I, I i can't describe but I just think direct light probably would have been a little sharper. Yeah. And okay. created less haste. Yeah. That said, again, you're you're on a shoot, you didn't scout, you don't know what the light's going to do. There's there's not much you can do that. So right. what would be the next thing you could do? Um the, I don't know if you have any scrims or any kind of like diffusing fabric. Mm -hmm. Um the next thing could have been to like literally hang some diffusing fabric just and you could have done you could have composited it and done like different layers, but mm -hmm. just to try to reduce the amount of light that was pouring in mm -hmm. like over that window. Okay. So you're thinking um, like scrim the entire window with, you know, white diffusing type stuff. Yeah. That, that could have helped a little bit. I think you, you probably mm -hmm. would have had to been out a little further, like to the, I'm guessing there's like a canopy or an yeah. awning or something above there. Yeah. You probably would have had to been out there a little bit. Mm. Um, but that may have reduced a little bit. Yeah. The, the other thing I may have done different is I would have possibly thrown a flash out that left window mm. and fill, filled the room in. I would have angled it kind of toward <sighs> the, yeah. toward the back toward that door. Yep. Yep. No, dude, you, you hit the nail on the head right there. Dang. That's, that's, Definitely one thing I didn't consider. Like you, like you said earlier, I threw everything at this that I could think of, and I didn't think of that. And I think that would have been really cool. The, the other thing, I mean, yeah, like you said, you don't have anything behind you that you could have like really used. But I think compositionally, I may have changed things just a little bit mm -hmm. because I think there's a lot of um, ceiling and like, there's a lot of white space. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if that adds to the haziness at all. Right. But I almost would have cropped in a little bit tighter, getting rid of that top right pendant light mm -hmm. and not worried so much about the stove. I probably would have just focused on, I don't know, I probably would have just cropped in maybe a little bit tighter, yeah. the, the, it, taking away some of the top, I don't know. Maybe not. It, it's hard to say. I just would yeah. have maybe adjusted my positioning a little bit. Yep. Yeah, it was a tough one, man. Um, but cool. Just just for time's sake, let's jump over to your photo. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to 
click out of there. Okay. And here we are looking at both images. Uh, so give us a little context uh, about your photo. Mine's on the left, yours is on the right. So give us a little context about the shoot and the image and kind of talk us through your initial thoughts looking at both of these now. Uh, one, I didn't, I must not have sent you some of the same files that I used. <laughs> Why? Because she's different, right? Uh, is she? Looks, yeah, yeah she, you, she is, yeah, but she had, I think she had like three versions of her. I did. I had a lot more than that, but I think I just sent you the one because I, I wasn't sure oh, okay. about digging too far and I wasn't sure which ones. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I see. It's also not cropped. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I don't need to talk about the client or anything, but the, the main thing about this shoot, the entire shoot, not just the shot, was they really wanted to show off the amount of natural light that this, mm. these offices had. It was really important to them to show that off. Also, they had these <clears throat> screens, these automated screens on the on the right or over the windows that would, it was basically on a timer. And what mm -hmm. would happen is, you know, as the, as it got too hot, it, the, they would come down. Yep. So like I, you, you probably saw the video that I made. I was really trying to highlight yeah, that in yeah. the video. Unfortunately, they didn't end up wanting the video. <laughs> Anyway, I figured, okay, well, I can't really show the blinds down and the view because the view is important to them as well. Mm -hmm. So early morning or late afternoon, depending on the directionality of the sun to the building, we, well, let's get some long shadows yeah, <clears throat> just to kind of convey, you know, that light, that all that natural light that's coming in. There were several days I went there when it was overcast and you don't, it just doesn't feel, you know, you just don't get that. I don't know. It, it just isn't as magical. So mm -hmm. anyway, um, the other thing is like these reflections in the, in the glass yeah. were incredibly challenging to deal with. Um, so you'll see in the edits that I, um, I was trying to flag them off. I was also all by myself. Yeah. which made it kind of difficult. But um, yeah, so I was trying to flag off some of those reflections just so I had a little bit more control of them in post-production. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm not sure what else to add about it. So what are initial thoughts looking at both of them now? Like knowing that you turned in the right one to your client and now seeing this other version on the left, you know, there's some similarities, some differences. Um, yours feels a little more desaturated the mine mm -hmm. uh it feels a little less warm mm -hmm. i'm not seeing the the it, and this may go back to why you said you decided not to use those at all <clears throat> like just for context it was one of those clients that wanted you to show every possible thing in one photo mm -hmm. Like their goal is, oh, show this, show that, show this in, in one photo. And it's like, I had to be a little more selective with things. Mm -hmm. They wanted me to have these doors open on the left so mm -hmm. I can see inside of that conference room. Huh. <clears throat> but the, the problem is, is that conference, well, one, the reflections actually look kind of cool. Mm -hmm. It just, it just adds a little bit more depth to the photo. Yep. But also when you open those doors, <clears throat> it's a, uh, it's just, it's, it's a big empty room. It was very boring. Yep. So my thought was, instead of actually opening the doors and showing inside of there, I'll just turn the lights on in there and just try to reduce some of the reflections so I can show what's happening in there, that there's mm -hmm. actually space in there. Um, but I wanted to make it as subtle as possible. And you can see in some of the raw photos, you can see in there pretty clearly because I was, I was, once I blocked things off, but that's not, I wanted those reflections to still be there. I just want to control over them. Yeah. <clears throat> Losing my voice. Hmm. So my initial thoughts, um, so because I had seen these before from you and I'd talked to you a little bit about this shoot, I did know that you were there by yourself. Yeah, you um, cheated. You, you, got, so, you, got a, <laughs> yeah. you got a little bit of a, a notice what these, what these look I like. I did. And it's tough because, you know, we, we don't shoot like multiple times a week or anything. So you right. giving me a brand new photo that I haven't seen, you know, I could have been more patient, but I just wanted to kind of do this thing because I thought it was a cool idea and I wanted to execute the idea. Yeah. Um, 
So when I went through the raw files and saw you flagging, I was like, oh my God, I can't believe you did all that by yourself. Like, I don't know if I would have done that. Um, but looking at both of these, like, yes, yours looks warmer. It looks, I think it doesn't look darker. Well, I guess overall it looks darker because the highlights are darker. Although our darks, I think, are the same darkness, if that makes sense. My brights are brighter, um, but I think our darks are about the same. Um, I like, I think yours does feel a little warmer. It has a different vibe to it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and now that you say that, and I'm looking at them side by side, like maybe I wish, you know, the final image was landed somewhere in the middle, because I do think that having the brights a little bit brighter um, on the ground and on the chairs and stuff, you know, helps give it some more of that contrast. But, you know, the lady's wearing pants and a long shirt. And now that I look at mine, I'm like, if I was wearing pants and a long shirt in there, maybe I'd be very hot because it does look like hot sun. But also I live in Hawaii and maybe that's just kind of like how my brain processes these long shadows and, and big windows. It's like, it's bright, you know, like I live in a, a bright tropical place. Um, I like yeah, it's all about it's all about context, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, your environment's yeah totally. Gonna, like, you're not going to see anybody wearing all black, like long black clothes in Hawaii, right? Right, you know. Um, I like the crop on yours on the right and on the chair, but but here's the issue I do like having the brick on the left. I did too. Um, so I like your crop on the bottom, I think looks great on the chair. Like, if I if I hold my hand over the screen and I only look at the right side of the frame. I love the crop on the chair and on the right. And of course, the uh, your crop on the right and the top gets rid of the shade that's like halfway, you know, like a little bit down or whatever, that's probably not supposed to be down. Um, but, and, and I like your bottom, uh, you know, where you cropped it on the black part makes sense. So I had, if, had I never seen the brick, I would think that's a perfect crop, but I like the brick. Um, and I like the hot spots on the brick also which I think is cool. Um, one thing I noticed that I'm kind of surprised, you had given me some files that look like you used a polarizing filter for these windows, right. um, but it looks like you've got some reflections on the windows where mine, um, I think I used some of those other files and got rid of those reflections um, by masking that out. Huh. So I'm yeah, curious. so, so um, I believe I did, but also the, f the film on those windows was really weird. Mm. Um, I don't know if it, because like they were the film was showing up on some of them mm -hmm. even without having a polarizer on mm -hmm. um and it was just that and you can see them in like in the, in the other photos <clears throat> there's some photos where you can just you can see the film in there so I don't I don't know how to describe what was happening but it's almost like it was like visible with your eyes and I mm -hmm. I, I don't know I don't know why why that was happening I've never yeah. shot a building where i noticed that without a polarizer so yeah yeah uh, and then one more thing yeah. uh just with the distraction removal is uh my ceiling um you know I, I got rid of what i would call little white dots like when i'm looking at yours <laughs> smaller like it is if i blow it up uh still you know i can start to see that it's like you know the shape of something whether those are lights or security cameras or fire something or others but um you know i got rid of all those on mine yeah um yeah i think you maybe just gave me a different file for your your lady walking um i probably but should we I, jump into the uh the edits yeah i had a ton do you want to go first you want, to, you want me to sure. show you mine yeah I'll, I'll pull up mine first oh wait no you, you show yours i need to open photoshop still so let me stop okay. sharing screen and Actually, I, go, I just I'll edited go. your photo this morning like right before we did this call so this is a little bit fresher in my mind as well okay cool so i see your lightroom now so let's see here i'll go into so first I'll show you, like, I shot a ton of foot. This was my first shot of the shoot. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So this, I didn't even get into, so I'm just kind of scrolling through to show you all the, fo the files that I shot mm -hmm. just for this one shot, 77 photos. Wow. <clears throat> so I'm um, seeing Photoshop now. Oh, oh that's ah, my Photoshop, nice. isn't it? Hold on. Sorry. My Photoshop was taking okay. over Zoom. Okay. I'm still in your Lightroom. Okay. Sounds good. So yeah, 77 photos. Um, I don't normally use this card, but this was an important shoot. So I was like, okay, I'm going to be up in this lobby a, a while. So I did get these samples um, mm -hmm. just so that I had it in case I needed it. Mm -hmm. 
Um, these are a couple shots of me just straightening the furniture. But as you can see, <clears throat> this is what it actually looks like up there. Yeah. Uh, most days. And this, so this was very overcast and I was kind of praying the sun was going to come out. Yep. Um, so as you can see, as it started to come out, I finally, I was going to use these as my base layer. Mm -hmm. And I was assuming that I wasn't going to get sun the rest of the morning. So I was planning on just using those, which I think I did. Mm. Now you can see what's happening. There's all these reflections. Like oh, I, said, again, I, I didn't realize this too. Sorry to cut you off. I didn't realize uh -huh. when you did the flagging too, that you lower those shades on the right. Yeah. And now I see yep. that. That's interesting. Yep. Yep. Okay. So you started um, to flag. Just because I was trying to reduce that reflection as much yeah. as I could. Um, the other thing is these lights in here were motion controlled. So it took mm. extra long because I had to keep on going in and out. <laughs> yeah, to turn them yeah. on. Um, so the idea, like I said before, the idea was that I wanted, they wanted to be able to see inside here, but they wanted me to open these, some of these doors. Right. And I was like, I had just, it would just look weird. It also looks really weird with them on and no reflection. So I wanted to be able to control that, which is why I brought this flag out to mm -hmm. lock them off. So let me go to my actual photos that I used. You can kind of see, I'm just taking them section by section. And yep. I, I wasn't going to get them perfect. So I just figured I would sample these out. Mm -hmm. So I'm literally just going section by section because I knew I was going to be compositing these. Yep screwing those things off so and yes i had to do it all myself so i'm like holding this up in the air because my things weren't tall enough yeah yeah stand so i'm like holding this up in the air hitting the camera ranger button with my nose yep. <laughs> um yeah so anyway going back to like some of the other ones that i didn't send you in the edit because i didn't mm -hmm. end up using those um just more scrimming just like yep. experimenting and then I turn, then I shut this up. I don't think I sent you any of these, but I was trying oh. to see if this would help with, with reflections at all as well. And okay. it did a little bit, but not, not what I needed. Mm -hmm. So I didn't even, I didn't even bother using those. Um, I think I sent you these as well. And this just kind of shows you it's still overcast in here. Yeah. Like there's, it's just not the same drama. Totally. Without those lights. I think I probably sent you these as well. Yeah, then, then I had her come in and just have her walk back and forth. I gave her some marks to go back and forth on, and I just okay. told her I was to just walk back and forth for me. Mm -hmm. Really slow. And yeah, it's pretty much that. Okay, so I had all those photos, and there's more, obviously. We did some more. Yeah. So plenty I could have used of her walking. Mm -hmm. All right, so then I brought them on into photoshop so this is one of my base layers and you can it's pretty good as is like it just right time of day mm -hmm. right lighting I, I just had some basic photoshop adjustments in there just to adjust the exposure but mm -hmm. like this is my style this is my vibe this is kind of what i what i go for yeah but now i needed to add all the things that i like i had to add the light into here reduce some of the reflections get rid of some distractions so that's pretty much what Oops, I got to turn this on. That's pretty much what this is. So mm. I have I have them all grouped into this room, and I have the opacity down to thirty eight percent because if okay. it was all the, if it was all the way up, it would look like that. Right, and that looks ridiculous. So again, I wanted some of those reflections to still be in there, so I just teased it back to the point where it wasn't super distracting mm -hmm. or visible, and I I just landed at thirty eight percent. Yep. Whereas if I would have went up even just a little bit, it's just a, it just looks weird. Yeah. It doesn't match with the cold exterior. Cause this, by the way, this is also in February. Um, in Nashville where it's cold. Nashville. Is that, is that yeah, what you mean? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So it was, I, I wasn't going to make this look like summertime because it just, it wasn't. So right. um, there's no, there's no green out there. Mm -hmm. just, the idea was to make it match. So I've got this, then I de okay, I have a desaturation layer here mm -hmm. where I was desaturating some of the yellow in there so that it didn't look mm -hmm. super yellow. I don't know if I ended up using that because it, it's almost a little too desaturated for my taste. All right. Anyway, then I let's see what are these layers? Looks like distraction removal. Ah, uh, yes. That was probably after getting feedback from you guys. So I would have kept it in there otherwise. 
<laughs> this, so did you, I, I didn't notice on yours. Did you remove this exit sign? Oh yeah. Are you okay. crazy? So that was, the, that was actually a little more challenging than I thought. Really? Um, because I don't normally remove those things. Cause I don't, huh. um, not challenging. Oh wait, actually, no, I'm sorry. I'm thinking of a different photo. This one wasn't as challenging. Okay. There was, there was another photo where I had the exit sign that was a lot more challenging. Than this gotcha. One. Um, yeah. So anyway, distraction removal there. Um, but I guess just while we're on it, it's like, there are little, it's not just removing an exit sign. You've got to like adjust the piping mm -hmm. so that it matches. Um, it looks like actually this, this bar should have actually continued onto that thing. Oh, oops. Oh, well. All right. And then uh, let's see here. We've got more distraction removal. It looks like. Oh, I did. Okay. I did add that on there. That's right. Okay. That's oh, what I was saying. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't catch that. So and I'm curious should... though. Um, oh, that's, that's a really good catch. Damn. That's, that's like very nuancy. That's really good. So I'm curious though. You said, uh, like making those uh, like bars in the windows line up. Maybe, you know, since we anticipate people watching this at some point, yeah. um, show me how you did that because uh, I didn't find it very challenging and I thought it was rather quick. So I'm curious how you went about like recreating the, the like window bar or whatever. Uh, oh, that little, that, this, uh, this thing here, here let me yeah. my, this thing here. Uh -huh. uh, I'm pretty sure I just cloned from right here. Okay. But let me just look. No, oh, I cloned from down here, maybe. Yeah, I must have. I must have. I don't know, dude. I actually, I don't know. <laughs> what, what did I do? Let me see. Okay. Oh, I clearly just still used. Man, I really don't know. Okay, maybe no worries. I, I, I must have taken it. From, uh, yeah, I take. I took it from down here. It looks like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't catch that. I just made it all gray. Yeah. Yeah, so that that you know if you, anyway, so there's that. Um and then and the I just have my model later later. Yeah. And the uh, light had changed so much that I had to do a little bit of manual. If you zoom in pretty close, you can probably see some mistakes, but I had to by disable the mask, like I had to paint around her a little bit mm. just because it was done at a different time of day from when those lines were there. Gotcha. So I yeah. do remember that being a little challenging. If, oh, yeah, I see. The closer you get, it looks pretty fake. Uh huh. But nobody's going to notice that, really. Right. I mean, you probably will now that you've seen it. Mm -hmm. Um. But the client wasn't going to notice that. Yeah. So. Cool. Well, let me jump into mine and show you what I've got. Um. Yeah. It's so it's so interesting how we do things similar but different. Yeah. All right. Share screen. All right. Can you see my Photoshop? Yes. Cool. So I've got yours open now. All right. Uh, let me turn these off. So first wow, of all, you barely have any layers there. <laughs> I know. Yeah. So uh, I, I wish I would have kept some of my, my groups. So when I went in and saw your raw files, I was a little confused. Actually, let me, let me go ahead and open up those real quick too. Uh, I'll open up your raw files here. So you know, I saw the gray card and I was like, ah, I've never really used one of those in my life. I'm not going to use that. Um, I saw this and I was like, oh shit, flagging. Like, I know you're by yourself. Like, that's a lot of work. Like, I don't know if I would have done that. And then I started thinking, well, if the client like really said, like, we want to see inside here. Um, sorry, it's like still loading. Um, that's good. You know, maybe I could see why you did it. But then I was like, well, it's empty. Like, why would the client want to want to? want to see inside there when it's empty but i was like well clients are, it, you know that and clients are unreasonable that's why yeah there you go <laughs> um so i was like okay like i'm definitely going to use those I'll, I'll kind of group those together um then i got down here and i was like okay well this is clearly not that pretty light but maybe there's something usable from there and then i started looking at the ceiling uh which yep. again it's loading slowly because we're on zoom and bridge is antiquated but I started looking at this and I'm like, okay, that ceiling, that ceiling supposed to be light colored or dark because in some of the other ones, it looks really dark, which matches the vertical post and like the door frames, but maybe it's actually supposed to be light because there's a couple where the ceiling looks light. So I kind of held on to this one. I think it was, uh, for the ceiling or maybe, I don't know, one of these other ones for the ceiling. 
And then I got down here and I was like, okay, is, this looks like maybe there's like a polarizing filter being used, or is it just the light is shifted outside? Um, and then I was like, okay, we definitely want the model in there. Um, and so when I'm looking at the ones with the model, I'm like, man, that's a pretty solid photo as is, you know? But then I realized that there's reflections over here and I started to think about the other ones where it seemed like there might've been a polarizing filter used. So I was like, okay, so this one, I could tell there's reflections on the table and not on the glass. So I'm thinking, okay, now we've turned the polarizing filter 90 degrees. So I wanna use both of those, one for the glass, one for the table. So I pulled those all in and started messing around with them. Uh, and then brought them in here. So originally I had, created two copies of the one with the woman, one a little bit darker and one a little bit lighter. And I was like, well, maybe I need to like blend them together. And I blended them together and I'm like, ah, it's just kind of muddy. Like I, I like the harsher contrast. So I just stuck with the one base. And at this point I'm thinking, this is a pretty solid photo as is. Um, and it doesn't need a ton, I don't think. But the, uh, I did layer in a couple files. So the far window, so I took, this image because I felt like the windows out here looked really great, uh, which this is a little bit closer to your base, you know, mm -hmm. but I just painted in the far windows. So if we turn that off, like this is a little bit more, I don't know, dull, maybe like a little bit more overcast. And then this yeah. one, I don't know, maybe it's just a color temperature difference or something. I think it's, uh, I think it's a little I, bit of both. You know, I did a, a, a path with my pen tool for all of those windows. So I did that. And then I wanted to do the, the windows on the right. Uh, once again, I made a selection partly with the um, quick selection tool, partly with the lasso tool. And once I had all that done for these windows, I went ahead and selected that and made another path just in case I needed to go back on the windows. That took a while. Um, yeah. <laughs> So then I've got the windows, but I think the windows look great. And this one, um, the color temperature was different. So if you look at this, um, I adjusted the color temperature in, you know, Adobe Bridge or whatever before I brought it in. And I think the way that I did that was that I sampled like one of the colors outside. So when I was in Bridge or a camera raw, or whatever, I took my uh, color sample tool and I clicked on somewhere around this bridge or something to like, you know, select what was white out the window. So Got my windows in there. Can I, just point, add, can I just add a quick while you're on this particular layer? Uh-huh. Um, something that may have like sped the process up for you a little bit. <clears throat> Instead of doing all the masking or the, yep. the, the, the pen tool. Yeah. Um, you could, do, are, are you familiar with like holding down shift when you brush out things? Uh, I don't know. To create straight lines? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. so, and are you familiar with how to do that on a diagonal? Line? Yes. Okay. So that, I think that that I did that on some of the other photos, not on this one, mm -hmm. um, just because it saved time versus like yeah. having to. Anyway, sorry, I just. I, I think sure the I think for these the uh, the pin tool selection whatever like all the the selection method I felt like it was fairly quick for how many spaces there were you know. Yeah. Um, th this whole edit took me I think an hour and five minutes. But what I did also, again, I had played around with like the, the dark and the light. I wish I would have left it here as like an example of what I played around with. And eventually I looked at my camera and I was like, you know what? Delete. And I was like, I don't need it. I think it's fine the way it is. And I did the same thing with the flagging. So I did all the flags. And what I found was that uh, there was a couple of those instances where, like you said, it wasn't perfect. And I was like, oh, I wish you would have put the flag a little bit over. Because had I wanted to keep all the flagged images, again, like you said, you would have had to kind of clone in some of that. And I looked at it and I desaturated the orange and I looked at it. I actually never tried um, adjusting the opacity to lower the opacity on the interior views, but I was like, it's an empty room. I like the reflections. Like it yeah. looks cool that the reflections keep going to me. I agree. So I, I, I probably would have had it like this if, if I, if that wasn't a factor for them. Yeah. So I left it as is. And then I went to my fixes and, uh, oh, I did two, two layers for my fixes. I, a lot of times I end up squishing these down to one layer, but um, I'll just quickly show you how I did the, uh, the exit sign, just because again, it was done an hour ago and it's fresh in my mind. And I felt like it was pretty quick. Although I did not catch that little thing down here that you did, which was a great catch. Um, so what I did was 
first I selected, whoops, sorry, going too fast here. Made a selection like this, and then Command Shift C copies everything from underneath the layer and uh, pasted Wait, hold, it. Hold on, I missed that. The, yeah, I so I, I have it selected, what? and then I'm on an empty layer right now. I just made a layer for my for my fixes or whatever. Yeah, but what did you? How did you select what you selected? I guess that's what Command I Command Shift C makes a selection of like everything that's underneath this layer. That makes sense. It makes sense. I'm just trying to figure out what the application is for that. And I guess you're going to show me in a uh, second. Basically to work non-destructively because otherwise I would have to, in order to select underneath here, like without hitting command shift C, I would have to flatten everything to, to copy it. Ah. So by hit, holding command shift C, I can copy everything underneath there without having to flatten everything first. Interesting. Okay. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it only copies from the layer that you're currently on, which is an empty layer. So now but it I can seems like it. it's only it seems like it's only selecting the masking, or what you had masked off. Yeah, it's it's selecting what was in the marching ants. Got it. Okay. Wow. Um, so now I've got just this little crossbar, <clears> and I can layer that in like this, and that now why the you see this layer mask? So I just made a layer mask, and. Uh, layer mask, eraser tool. And then I just blend it in the edges. Oops, sorry. No, come on. Why is it? Oh, I see why. Sorry. Okay. So now on the layer with my little crossbars, I just blend the edges to blend in. Uh, And then delete that because there's only a skinny bar at the top. So now my bars are done. And then from here on a different layer is when I just did a selection like this. And again, he's sneaky bastard. I didn't see that other gray part at the bottom or like that little thing in the background. But then I just, you know, did normal cloning from here. And I went section by section. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So I would have done this and made this one gray and then selected this little section. So anyways, um, that's just one way to get things done. Right. So there's my, my fixes. What did I, do? I remove this? There were some like re little reflections that were kind of like little blocks of color over here. Uh, and then I did my outside desaturation. So I just, you know, made a selection of these windows again and then uh, desaturated because there was some weird, like super the magenta cast. magentas down here. Yeah. Uh, I, so I, I dealt with that throughout. Yeah, I, I dealt that with that throughout the whole building. It was oh, just shit. Again, this weird film that it had on the, yeah. on the glass. So yeah, I just did magenta and I think a little bit of blue desaturation or something. And then I did um, a warming filter at 60%. <clears> so um, Without it, it felt a little bit cool. Uh, so what I did was did a photo filter of this uh, warm 85, 25 orange color. Uh, and then I felt like the outside was too warm because the windows were already warm. So I had that selection already, deleted it. And then I went back and forth. I was like, should I keep it at 100? Do I do it at 70%, 60%, whatever? Um, and at the end of the day, I landed on what, 60%? Yeah, I think it was at 60% or maybe 50%. Um, and there was my final image. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. The decisions, it's just interesting the decisions we make, like, mm -hmm. and, and, and how you were looking at things as you were kind of like originally going through the photo. Yeah. Like you were looking at uh, like the ceiling. Like, I don't think I ever thought about the ceiling once. Yeah, but if you were there, you might have seen that the ceiling was dark. And it didn't even register to that it might be light okay. because I was looking at all these photos that had like the different exposures of the ceiling. Oh, okay. Um, and I think maybe just not seeing a dark ceiling, like, you know, most ceilings are usually brighter, white or whatever. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, so I just went back and forth. And then at the end of the day, I was like, you know what? I think the ceiling's supposed to be dark. It looks a good dark. So kept it dark. Mm. But I did, I did overlay like one of the lighter ceilings. I selected it out, you know, cut it out, put a lighter one on there. It's like, ah, that doesn't look right. I just deleted that layer too. Hmm. Yeah, that was very, very interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it's All cool around. to see, um, you know, again, how, how you do things versus how I do things differently. And it, it also goes to show that, you know, as photographers, like our vision is part of <clears throat> the service that we offer and everybody's going to do things differently. Um, you know, not in just editing, but how you visualize things on site, how you prepare your files, how you shoot different frames so that you can build it the way you want to build it. And this is a thing I, I talk about all the time uh, when I'm like doing coaching stuff or doing these workshops is that this is a mentally really exhausting job because we're constantly editing in our head. And I tell my clients this all the time, like as I'm doing things, I tell that I'm editing in my head because in order to get those flagged frames, like you had to edit that in your head, you had to know how those flagged frames were going to look ahead of time. And same thing with my kitchen shot and the C, you know, the, the polarizing filter and the flashes. And it's like, I was trying to build the image in my head and can throw everything at it. Like make sure I had mm-hmm. a little bit of this, a little bit of that in case I needed to blend those files together for, for my final image. I think what you said a minute ago about <clears throat> the, the vision is, um, or did you say vision? Basically our vision is like, I, I would almost argue it's like the most important thing because even when it comes to setting to editors, like, mm-hmm. I I've done some editing for some people before and I just, we all see things different. Yeah. And it's like, there, there's just, there's context to everything. Like how we, I don't know, like I, I tend to like things a little more dark and moody. It's like, but I was when going back to when I was talking about with your photo, it's like, I was editing it with what I thought I was making an assumption mm-hmm. based on like how you might look at things. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah, I, I don't know. I think that there, aside from Photoshop, vision is everything because when you go into it, like you said, you're constantly editing, even as you're shooting, you're like, you're just thinking about that. Mm-hmm. You're shooting with the edited mind and you have, you have all these things. And I don't know, I, I don't have a very well articulated thought on that, but I just, yeah. I kind of wanted to just drive home that like our vision is a lot more important than we give it credit for, not just our skills, yeah. like our Photoshop skills or our, even photography skills or knowledge, they're just, yeah. Maybe, maybe that's the big takeaway here. Like as we're kind of wrapping this up and packaging it to share with other people, hopefully is that our vision plays a lot into our work because when you, as a, as a person in a 3d environment, walk into a space, you see a certain thing. And for a photographer to be able to translate that into a mood, into a feel, into a lifestyle, into an overall vision, like that's the service that we're providing. And I think that's what separates photographers from each other is how we visualize things and how we walk into a space and can visualize that 3D space into a two dimensional photograph and what the mood, what the feel of that photograph is gonna give the end viewer. One, one other, one more thought that I just wanna share is, um, and we've, you and I have talked about this before, but subject matter is everything. Like not everything, but it's like, it's more important than we give it credit for. Mm. As you can see, like the, 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 my shot, like the environment I was in, like it gave me everything that I needed. I didn't have to do, there was very little that I had to do. Yeah. The, the light, the light was perfect. The timing was perfect. Um, just the subject itself was, was interesting. Y- you only use what two photos. Yeah. Maybe I think three, maybe three photos frames and it's like there wasn't a lot of trickery involved Mm -hmm. there wasn't even a lot of photoshopping that had to be done it was mostly just fixing things but again like that subject for me it it gave me that photo i didn't really do much to it whereas your photo you had to force that to happen because Mm -hmm. you didn't you didn't have you didn't have a, a, a amazing photo given to you right like this is you were tasked with photographing this thing and you had to make it work with the knowledge that you had. And that's, I don't know what, what little <clears throat> bow I want to wrap up that yeah. thought with, but I just, I, I'm more just trying to articulate like when you're, if you're a photographer who's been being given amazing, um, amazing subjects all the time to shoot, um, maybe I'll wrap it up this way. Don't, don't get discouraged when you see people having these amazing projects and like thinking they're amazing photographers oftentimes they're just being given good Mm -hmm. 
subjects to shoot. And it's like, it's as simple as that. There's just not a lot of, there's not a lot of work to be done after that. Yeah. So um, here's another thought on, uh, on my particular shot. Three years ago, walking into that kitchen, I would have been so stressed. And one of the uh, things I like to keep in my head, I did an interview with a guy a million years ago when I was in the BMX world and I asked him for a quote and he said, never let him see you sweat. That was like, I think literally that was the very first interview I ever did with somebody when I worked at the BMX magazine. But that quote stuck out with me because I carried today going into a room like that, you know, I would have been trying so hard not to let my client see me sweat because again, a couple years ago, I would have been sweating in that room. But yeah. uh, there's a phrase I also like is that when you hit your earned confidence, things change. And one of my clients one time asked me like, you know, when did, when did you realize you made it as a, as a photographer? And I was like, that's a really interesting question. And the first thing that popped in my head was like, when I hit a certain like income milestone, you know, of like how much money I made for a year. But then after I really thought about it, I was like, you know what? I think I, I felt like I had made it, even though I, you know, you're always growing, you're always getting better. I haven't, you know, what has made it right. But to right. answer her question, I said, when I earned my confidence. And what I meant by that is that I can walk into that really difficult kitchen and be like, all right, like it, it sucks. It's going to be a nightmare. It's going to be a pain in my ass, but I'm not going to sweat. And I don't have to be nervous about this. Like I, I have done it enough. I have shot enough difficult kitchens. I have figured out how to overcome enough difficult obstacles, both in shooting and editing to be confident that I can go in there, take a bunch of frames, bun pop a bunch of flashes, go crazy with the polarizing filter and come home and deliver a photo that is going to make the client happy. So I've mm -hmm. earned my confidence and that uh, goes a long way. And really the only way you can do that is by doing enough repetitions to have those experiences to draw from in your past to know that you can, you know, deliver the photo in the end. It's interesting what we each also define as success, you know, success or whatever, or that we've made it. Mm -hmm. Like for me, I've, I've been able to walk into a room for a long time and feel confident about it. But my conf my lack of confidence comes in not getting the type of work that I want to be shooting. Mm. You know what I mean? That's that just, it's just very interesting. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Well, cool. This is a fun exercise. Yeah. Thanks, man. I, I appreciate you doing it. Um, you know, taking the extra time to edit one of my photos, <laughs> if that was that challenging. Um, and hopefully we can figure out a way to package this and put this out there and let other people gain some knowledge from it as well. Um, but yeah. you can follow me on Instagram at Adam Taylor photos. Uh, check out all my educational resources at adamtaylorphotos.com slash education. And Jordan, tell them where they can find you and your stuff. Yeah, you can find me on Instagram on at Jordan Powers without the vowels. And uh, you can find anything that I'm doing on my website as well, jordanpowersphotography.com.